Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today, we are going to start a Let's Play of Old World. So we've already done a Let's Play tutorial, where we went through the actual game tutorials. Now, we only did four of the five, but I'm ready to play a game. Uh, we'll figure out the uh, militaristic part. That's what uh, tutorial number five was. And maybe we'll go back and do it before as this game progresses. But we're going to jump into a real game because I'm uh, chomping at the bit to play through one. And uh, this game, I'll just say up front, is notoriously difficult to beat. Uh, there have been a lot of good uh, men that have gone down and trying to get this, and women, trying to get this uh, old world defeated. So we are going to have our hands full. We're going to have to min-max this thing, get all the bonuses. That's the key to this game, is get as many bonuses as you can. You know, search through your character, search through the terrain, uh, look at the different families, and try to get as many bonuses as you can. So let's jump in and play a game. We're going to go single player, uh, new game. Okay, and when we look at the different civilizations here, uh, they each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Of course they do. That's how these games are uh, set up and, and made interesting. And it does have a lot of replayability because of that, because they are very, very different. Uh, the Assyrians, for instance, like to pillage. Uh, they also are just, they're militaristic in nature, They but they really like to come out and pillage. Babylonia is probably my second favorite civilization because they give you uh, science, they give you culture, um, and those two things are incredibly powerful, or maybe that's just how I like to play. Uh, so that's a good one, uh, certainly. Carthage gives you a lot of civics, so you can build up a really nice society if you're into the civics part. Uh, you have Egypt, which is more about building and farming and building up these big urban centers. Uh, they can be quite powerful if they can get there. Uh, the Greeks, that's who we're going to play, and they are really all about culture. Now, you can also see their other uh, benefit is negative 25% cost for settlers, but after the early game, that's not you know, that it really doesn't do you a whole lot. Uh, so, you know, we're really going to be going for a lot of culture. Now, I will tell you, Philip and his successor, Alexander, and you can see right down here, that's his uh, direct successor. They're both very good military military wise as well they have high courage scores uh they get a lot of training points they're good generals so uh you know they're very solid to start with because you got the culture side and the military side uh persia eh, they've got range units and plus 50 percent harvest production which can be very powerful early on as you're trying to grow as fast as you can uh rome of course is military and uh, so if you like to play the uh, military side of this game the most, uh, probably choose the Romans. Um, you can let the game choose for you. Or uh, when you settle your first city, then you can decide kind of based on where you're settled. Uh, because the terrain does make such a difference in this game. But we're going to play the Greeks. And uh, when we go over here, I've got it on the noble. Like I said, this game is notoriously difficult. But I don't want you guys giving me a hard time because I'm you know here at the strong. That's probably where I should play, but I don't want there to be three easier levels here and four harder levels. I'd rather it be four easier and three harder. So we're kind of in the middle, uh, but a little bit on the harder side. That's going to make for a very difficult game. And what is the difference? Well, it's what you start with, how aggressive the AI is. You can see here, AI aggression aggressive war probability plus 25 percent will not declare war before turn 20 okay if we went to the strong it will not declare war before turn 30 so you know there's an extra 10 turns to build up you know again th there's all kinds of differences there i'll let you read through it when you play the game but we're going to play on the noble and i'll be shocked if we're able to <laughs> beat this the first time through but we are certainly going to try uh, to, as I said, min-max the heck out of this thing. Get every bonus we can. It's the only chance you've got. you got to play pretty perfectly. Um, you are Philip, the Macedonian, the United of Greece. Seizing the kingship from your nephew, you've risen to the top with shrewd diplomacy and military might, leading the now united people of Greece into this old world. Your fifth wife, Olympias, has borne you an heir, Alexander, already showing an aptitude for military strategy beyond all other others. The existing civilizations of this old world do not yet know the strength and knowledge of Greece, but they will learn. Let's found our capital. Okay, let's do it. 
Before I do that, though, just point up here, I'm going to go to all characters. The only three characters we have right now are King Philip, and he is considered bold, and you can see the different bonuses that we get there. They're military in nature. He is also a commander archetype. Uh, that is really good uh, for him to be a general of our armies. Uh, so that's good. Doesn't have any wisdom doesn't have any charisma he does have four courage and you see all the bonuses over there to the left hand side uh really really powerful uh to have this much courage but as you can see our direct successor alexander even has more he is also uh two on discipline which gives us a lot of money bonuses uh which are very helpful of course early on the queen consort olympias both her and Alexander have a slightly negative opinion of us right now. Uh, whether she does or not, it's kind of like, eh, well, whatever. You know, it's hard to keep the wife happy. But uh, Alexander will definitely want to get a positive read on us uh, early on because we just can't afford to have him start losing stats or, uh, you know, not uh, become part or not become our next ruler. He's too good to let him go like that. So, you know, as this gets more and more negative and he becomes more and more disaffected with us, uh, the less likely it is he actually will succeed us. So we got to make sure we take care of that early on. If you ever want to know what a character, what bonuses it's giving you, you can click on the character and it will show you exactly what that character is doing. So Olympias, you know, everybody in our court adds to our global numbers based on their bonuses and, and uh, penalties. She's giving us a plus 1.2 in science, minus 3 on courage, or training, I'm sorry, training, uh, because her courage score is negative. That's actually a fair trade-off, though, because science is a lot harder to come by, right? So that's fine. Alexander's giving us a plus 15 training because of his very high courage score. King Philip the Founder is giving us quite a bit of money, quite a bit of training. So you can always check that out here, what each character is doing. Only the court um, gives you uh, what I would call empire-wide bonuses. The families, when we start to get families, they give you bonuses within their cities, okay? So anyway, uh, we are going to found our city. That's the first thing we want to do. And we've got four families to pick from, okay? And let's just scoot back here a little bit, kind of get a feel. It's kind of hard to tell on the mini-map where we may be. Uh, you can see we've got a body of water here, so we may want, you know, a more seafaring family, for instance. Uh, you can see where certain mountains are popping up there. Uh, Thera, we've got a mountain right here, as a matter of fact. And let's look at the four different families and decide which one we want to settle this city. Uh, our first city, the Argiads, they are militaristic. They give you, uh, they generally have champions in their families, so they give you more of those military type bonuses. Family cities also give you training. Uh, new units that are built there start with steadfast. Um, and on the seat being founded, so if we found this, we get a free warrior. Okay, so a warrior group would come out here. Uh, then, so that's the Argads. Then we have the Sipsalids. The Sipsalids are all about culture. They also do get a bonus from ships, you can see here. So the Sipsalids are pretty powerful. The second family, the artisans in every civilization has an artisan family. They're really powerful. They give you a lot of culture. They give you, you know, a good starting ships, and they give you plus 20% output from mines and lumber mills. Uh, they also, here in the family seat, would give us negative two years to build any urban improvements, right? So that's something to keep in mind if we want to build some urban improvements here in the city. And this is kind of a big city location, a lot of urban tiles here. So I think I am going to pick the Sipsalids. Uh, the Sulicids. They give you some civics, some culture. Uh, they can, you know, lessen discontent. They give you court ministers. A lot of times when you see what the family gives you where it says they're on-seat founded, it'll tell you what kind of family it is, right? On-seat founded warrior, on-seat founded worker, you know, on-seat founded court minister. And then you have the Alcmanids and they're sages. They give you civics. They give you science. 
they also, you know, for urban specialists, it's negative 20%. They also give you a random technology upon this seat being founded. That can be really great, right? Um, so... I, however, I think we're going to go with the Sipsalids. We're going to try to build a really strong culture because that is a strength of the Greeks, obviously. And uh, as part of that, we are going to pick divination as our first research topic. Uh, that will allow us to build shrines, which can give us various different bonuses. You can see over here we have uh, ancient ruins. We'll want to get right over there if we can. You can see here we've actually already got a garrison. So that's nice, very good. Um, okay, uh, I think we're ready to go and get going. What do we see, see here? City founded Pella, okay, we knew that. Technology discovered. So we every civilization starts off with three technologies and it just depends which civilization you picked, which ones they are. Uh, for the Greeks, it's drama, stone cutting, and iron working. Pretty solid, pretty solid to start with those three. Let's right click that. Uh, let's click on this. Choose a governor for Pella. Let's do it. Let's go to Pella. You can also go here to this wreath that is blinking, and that will allow us to choose a governor. Now, Philip could be the governor here. However, if he's the governor, he can't be the general of our army. So if we need him to be a general right now, you know, we probably don't want to make him the governor. Now, later on, when Alexander can, you know, step up and become our general, you know, depending on whether we need armies in the east, west, north, south, uh, then, you know, at that point, Philip can then become a governor. But we're going to go with Har Hipparchia the Younger. Okay, she's 26. She is an orator archetype, which makes her good for being a governor. Um, and you can see actually over here her stats. She's got four charisma, negative one on discipline. I really don't like that one for a governor, but I don't think we're really going to have a choice. We could pick Lysander. Uh, as a governor, he would give us more science. Actually, we cannot pick him uh, right now. Uh, Hipparchia the Younger. Okay, I think we're just going to go ahead and pick her. She is going to hurt us money-wise a little bit, but there may be where, ways that we can fix that. Uh, you can see, because she's an orator, we can hurry projects with the orders with her. She's eloquent, so we get plus two civics per year, or per culture level, okay. And she costs 100 civics and two orders. So we've got two orders, certainly. And we have 200 civics right now, so we're going to go ahead and choose her. And she is now the governor, and she'll start giving us bonuses. It also makes her like us. You can see that's the governor symbol. Um, we're not getting any global bonuses, but in the city we will get bonuses uh, in Pella or any other Sipsalid city. So, okay, uh, looks good. So we've done the governor which is kind of the first thing you always want to do here. We also got a free worker and have a worker. So we actually have two workers starting off here. We also have our warriors that are sitting here. So if we look, we've got two civilians. Uh, they are both workers, idle civilians. We have an idle military unit, the warrior, and we have the scout, right? All right, well, we want to get started on the warrior, and I generally always like to do the military first. I mean, look, if you screw up the military, it could cost you your whole, whole empire. So let's, uh, with these warriors, we could fortify uh, the town here. We could probably go sit in the garrison or in the center part of town here. And if we did that, it could build up to a 25% defensive bonus, 5% per year uh, but I don't think we need to do that right off the jump. We could add the general, which would be Philip the founder um, in this case. There may be one of the family members once you've uh, formed this, especially if you do it with the militaristic family, that maybe you would rather they be the general. But I'm not going to appoint a general yet. I'm going to wait for Alexander, actually. Now, I said, you know, Philip, we're not going to make him the governor because he may be the general. Only if necessary, only if necessary, probably. This first group of warriors, I want to say for Alexander. Now, he will not be 18 for five years. He's uh, 13 right now, if we look up here, I believe. Yeah, he's age 13. He cannot take command until he's 18. 
Uh, so just something to keep in mind. We could also try to influence him, but first of all, let's deal with these warriors. Let's promote them. All right, so we could pick uh, for this promotion combat one, which would give them a plus five on the attack and the defend and turn them into level twos, uh, plus 10% on the defend here and turn them into level twos. Besiegers uh, are better in urban areas. And then shield bearers are better against ranged units. Well, I think off the bat, we'll just do the very basic one, which is combat. And now there will be level two troops. You see they're level two. And they've got the combat uh, insignia there. That is their promotion. Okay, so that used an order. All right, we've got four orders left. Now, usually, you know, you would think, well, gosh, I really want to get my scout out there. But I think it's the most important to get our workers going here because they take quite a bit of time, obviously. So we've got the first worker, and it always pops up. What can I do, right? So you see here, there's a farm. That would give us plus 11 food because it's lush. It's next to a volcano on two different uh hexes interesting i mean is a farm by a volcano an advantage I, I sure uh okay uh down here build nets now i love to build nets what do, what do we have here that's honey oh that's beautiful look at this nice little grove out here uh where they're making honey um Okay, so we've got this worker and we've got this worker. So this one here, I think we'll bring right over here and do build nets. And if you look at this, what's it going to do? Plus two growth a year uh, because of the fish and then plus 10 food a year uh, because of the fish. And it enables a fisher specialist, which will even pump that up more. And then potential bonuses um, you know, if we put a Shrine of Poseidon over here, we get a bonus, a harbor, etc. Uh, but I'm going to bring this uh, worker over here, and we're going to build some nets. And that'll start our growth. If we go to Pella, and we look down here, we're trying to grow. That's growth. So every positive we can get will give us more citizens. We're going to obviously try to bump up our culture. You see our governor here. We just appointed her. And the discontent, right? Um, manage luxuries. Well, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Let's go to our next unit, which is the other worker. Now, we could build nets out here as well. And these uh, are special nets because we would be capturing dyes here that's really nice. Plus two output from dyes. Uh, so it's plus two culture, plus 20 money, both from the dyes. It enables Fisher and it adds a luxury. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, again, we also have this good farming location here, but I think we'd be fools not to go down here and get the dyes going. So we've got uh, no orders left when that unit gets out here. We just used up too many orders doing other things. And so we can't move the scout and we cannot get the nets going yet. Yet. Uh, one other thing we may want to look into is influencing King, uh, influencing Prince Alexander with King Philip. Um, but we can't do that without orders, right? So we will be doing that soon enough, probably next turn. If I'm being honest, uh, we got to get this done. We cannot allow him to start to dislike us. It becomes a real, real problem. Um, okay, let's end the year and go to turn two or year two, if you will. Oh, okay. Your wife has given birth to a daughter, Duchess Arixo. I like the name. Uh, oh, she's a cutie. Hi, Duchess Arixo. Time passes quickly. Prince Alexander is growing up fast and eager to learn. How would you like to educate Alexander? Well, what is Alexander good at? He's quite courageous, okay? So he's already really good at this. I probably want to diversify him, right? I mean, he's a five. Now, if he was going to become our ruler, and I thought he was probably going to be the general of all of our troops, and he was like a one or a two, I would probably go to tactics, because that would give him plus one courage. But I think instead, I want him to do philosophy, because I want him to build wisdom a little bit, right? He's going to be the eventual... Uh, leader we could do politics which is charisma so you get it right you get wisdom charisma courage discipline so what's he going to study or he can go down here uh if he's terrible and you kind of just cast him out he explores the world uh he'll study philosophy all right so he's bold 
we see that there. He is a philosophy student now. Uh, okay, now I want to get him liking us. Uh, I must be missing something here. Am I missing something? No, I don't think so. I don't think. Uh, oh, I can't influence him yet. Uh, I gotta. I've got to wait for Philip to get something else. I believe. Uh, where it should tell me on here though. Uh, we'll come back to that, but I am not able to influence him yet. I think Philip has to advance a level before we can do that. Okay, um, now then, we had a worker. So let's go to our warriors, right? Do we want them to do anything? Well, it's back up. I mean, is there anything to take over? Well, we see we have got another city-state out here, very close to our home city. I think we want to run out here and grab this. We don't see any barbarians here, right? Um, now, we could do that with the scout. We could also do it with the warriors. Maybe I'll wait uh, to do it with the warriors and instead promote them again but i can't do that either all right nine orders we do not have enough training we would need 200 well why don't we do this then we're going to go ahead and bring them over here to claim this city site all right so here here they come uh let's go there and then it would be a forced march. But they'll be there next time. And then we'll promote them when they get over here. Because we should have 200 training. We've got this worker going. So next would be the scout. Next would be the... let's. So I go, like to go military, worker, then scout. Um, build the nets. We want those nets built. It's going to take three years. We've got a settler. Divination, Settler, we've got our two workers working, we've got the Warriors out here, we've still got five orders left, so let's take the Scout. And anytime you see ruins like this, go to it, because you may get a free technology, you may get a free unit, something. Our Scouts report discovering a strange sculpture amidst these ruins. While it is unlike any art produced in Greece, it holds a strange beauty. What should be done with it? Display it in Pella, which would give us plus 40 culture. Now, what happens as your culture level goes up? Well, you have events. So every time a cult, your culture level goes up one, you have the chance at a very good event happening in your town. Perhaps someone else will appreciate it more. Ah, we're fine on money. Let's display it in Pella. All right. And so that will add to our culture. And if we go here to Pella, you know, you can see we're now at 49, 100, right? We're getting plus nine per turn. Why is that? It's the capital. Uh, this family is artisans. It's Greece. And we're getting a plus one from dyes. Okay, so we're getting nine every turn. Well, we just added 40 to that. That's pretty dang good. Uh, so, okay, cool. Um, next unit. Okay, we're still on the scout. He still has ways, you know, he can go here. You can see you can get all the way out, reaching out here. If I back up, which way would I like to go? We know about that city site. Could come like down here, over here, uh, up here. We could also uh, harvest something, potentially. So right now, we're getting plus 43 money per turn, negative 3 food per turn. We're going to have to, you know, build a farm or two, negative 1 iron and negative 1 stone. So none of that's particularly great. This is marble. Let's go here and let's, well, we can't do it. We can't harvest the marble. Um, okay, let's keep him going. Let's go kind of down this way. And we found the Pineos River. That gives us a plus two legitimacy. We'll take that, certainly. And uh, now he's up to a 16 legitimacy. What happened this time? Duchess Arixo was born. Uh, unfamiliar Arts gave us plus 40 culture. Uh, Prince Alexander also got a plus one wisdom because he became a philosophy student. And uh, that's just the turn summary. So I think we've done everything we might want to do, except I still can't influence. I got to figure out why I can't influence him here. I'm missing something. I think I'm pretty sure Philip has got to advance a level uh, because through experience points before he can influence anyone. Okay, let's end the year. 
All right. A letter arrives by a courier uh, from Prince Alexander at the Academy. To King Philip, the founder, my tutors ordered me to write this letter to you. I have little time for you, but this must be done. Signed, Alexander. Okay. <laughs> well, Alexander gets plus 40 experience points. Such disrespect. Uh, well, he likes to mess around with his dad a little bit. That, uh, <laughs> I guess, I guess that's what's going on. Um, okay. Military. Let's go get on this city site so that we've claimed it. Okay. Um, next unit. So actually, let's put this on sentry duty, that military. Next unit's the scout. Both of our workers are already busy. There's nothing else to be done there. Uh, so let's just keep the scout going. Kind of run him down here. Got a lot of potential farmland here, certainly, as we start to break away the clouds to see what else is out here. Okay, and that's it. We end the year. We had two orders left. Queen Consort Olympias, your wife, <coughs> excuse me, has a great deal of sympathy and concern for others. She is compassionate. So globalist, that gives her a plus one charisma and a plus one discipline. That's great. Gives us another six gold and 0 0.5 civics. Uh, excellent. All right. Always want these uh, adding, adding, right? She's still negative one courage, but now that discipline's uh, popped up one. And uh, if we click on her, you can see the bonuses she's giving us. Plus four to money, plus 1.2 to science, 0 0.5 to civics, and negative three on the training. But that's okay. We've got other good characters for the training. Uh, we should look at these characters a little bit. Oligarch Lysander of Pella, you know, he is part of the Sipsalid family. He's very wise. He's not very courageous, certainly. He's got some charisma, too. He is gracious. Okay. Um, he is a schemer, so he can serve as an agent or a spy master. He's a guy we may get over spying on other people eventually. Um, Prince Alexander. There we go. Now we're influencing him. Uh, that's good. We needed that. Uh, so he is now being influenced by Philip. So Prince Alexander is being influenced. It does take an order, but that's okay. Uh, the scout, first of all, let's go to the worker. And this worker has completed his nets. All right. So let's see what else this worker could work on. And really, it's only the farm up here. Uh, kind of disappointing. There's not more things we could do, but let's go up here and we will build a farm. All right. And plus 11 foods, pretty good for a farm because we're getting these nice bonuses by being <laughs> next to the volcano for whatever reason. Uh, what's happened down here? Nets finished. We knew that. We sold our extra two orders that we ended the last turn with for 20 gold. You can always do that. Queen Consort Olympias uh, is compassionate, and we already knew that. So I think we're ready. Just making sure. Yep, let's end the year. So our rivals are taking a turn. I think there are five other civilizations on the map uh, in a game of this size with this map size. Your wife has given birth to a son, Duke Sopolis. Okay, we're really building up our little family here. Um, <laughs> look at that. You can send in baby pictures. Uh, so we've got Duke Sepolis, Duchess Erixo. So we've got our succession line, you know, right here. Prince Alexander, Duchess Erixo, and then Duke Sepolis. Uh, shouts from the trees. Our men hurry towards the noise and discover an injured Egyptian lying in the dirt. His companions work frantically to treat his wounds. According to the men, their caravan was transporting goods to the nearest Egyptian city when they were attacked by bandits. They managed to repel the attackers and save their cargo of fine wine. All right. Um, treat his wounds and escort the caravan to its destination negotiate an exchange of protection for goods. Okay, so we lose some training, but we gain some money. Kill the Egyptians. Wow, kill the Egyptians and steal their cargo. Well, I'm not into that, man. I'm, I'm going to wait for that. Maybe we just want, you know, the Egyptians to be on our side a little bit. Uh, do we need money? Well, we're getting like six plus 60 a turn. It's not great. Uh, we're at 52 right now. Um, 
or we could just have them like us. Let's just do the plus 20 opinion, okay? And you can see we've just now, there's Egypt. So we're here, and now there is Egypt. Uh, we have spotted them. All right. Inspired by nature, make a decision about this event. Prince Alexander has been sneaking off into the wild after class each day, growing ever more inspired by nature. What advice should we give to this budding naturalist? <laughs> okay. The predator strikes without regrets. He becomes ruthless. No. Never let hill, beast, weather, or man stop you. Uh, becomes brave. As a general, he's plus 10% attack and defend against melee. Uh, as a leader overall, even if he wasn't our general, it's a plus five. That's really nice. That's a really good one. Uh, there are many mysteries of the world to see. He becomes exploring. He's no longer a philosophy student. Brave. I, that, w that one was pretty obvious. Um, and if you look at Alexander now, he's brave. He's bold. He's a philosophy student. Aren't we all? Um, we've got a worker that's been freed up. I also wanted to come down here uh, because I have them on sentry duty. These warriors will not pop up. I want to promote them yet again. Uh, and just, you know, you always want to do this. Keep promoting these warriors. Combat 2 would give them plus 10% attack and defend and move them to level 3. Uh, amphibious, you know, land, water, combat. Shield Bearer gives them plus 10% against uh, range. And Horsebane gives them plus 25% against mountain units. Well, let's go combat 2. Okay, you can see the two stars there. They've already got combat 1. So they're a plus 15%. Uh, against whoever they fight, uh, attack and defend. So that's great. We could, uh, they have to cool down now that we promoted them. Next turn, we could make Philip their general, but we'll see. Uh, let's go to the worker then, and we've got this worker freed up. What else could he do? Well, he could come up here and build this farm, and we could start stacking farms next to each other. Is there any other thing he could do? Not really. He could uh, go ahead and start heading down to the city, uh, but we don't get the settler for two years. We may as well go up here and build a farm on the outskirts of Pella. Uh, it's going to get a bonus, right? So if we click on here, ah, I should have looked closer at that before. But he is going to get a bonus because when you put all these like things next to each other, they do get a bonus. So excellent. The scout. Let's keep the scout moving. The more we discover first, we can get money for that. Oh, War Ambassador, a gruff chieftain arrives from the Gauls. He demands that we offer tribute or suffer a brutal extended conflict with his people. You are advised to submit without further delay. If I bring my army into your land, I will destroy your farm, slay your people, and raise your city. Wow, okay, the Gauls. Look at this guy. Uh, I think I saw him in a Marilyn Manson concert in 1994, potentially. We are humbled by your power. Uh, tribute to the Gauls, 6.5 food for 40 years, man. Uh, if, <laughs> if, I like it. So we just say, all right, buddy, if, uh, I like that one. You will get no such offer from us. Okay, so King Philip the Founder would become brave as general. He would be plus 10%. Another bonus. My God. I mean, one of these units is going to be like 100% bonus at some point. Um, we are humbled by your, gosh, 6.5 food. I really don't want to get into a war this early. Um, it doesn't give us any negative traits, though. I'm going to pay them off. I, I don't like to do that. I mean, we want growth, certainly, but they're going to be a little too close to our second city. I do not want to start fighting with them already. Uh, what do we have here? Duke Sapolis, our son was born. Uh, nets were finished. National contact. We met Egypt. Yes, we did. We met the Gauls. Uh, Prince Alexander became brave. Egypt, we helped their supply caravan. They like us. And we're now paying tribute to the Gauls. Boy, that one really galls me. Uh, I think we've done all we can do. Let's end the year. We may have to go over here and kill the Gauls. Uh, and get our food back. The influence mission of King Philip the Founder has led to an event. Oh my gosh, 
he, this is not what we needed. Reports indicate that someone in your court has been sharing information with the Egyptians and Queen Hatshepsut. Uh, the learned of Egypt has been heard boasting how she is eager to put the Greek technology to use. Following the trail, your agents discovered that the breakthrough came from a message from Prince Alexander. So Alexander gave the Egyptians drama, the drama tech. Well, there's going to be some drama if I get a hold of this kid. Uh, oh, my goodness. Mistake or not, punishment is necessary. This would imprison him. It would basically make him not our successor. Brand Alexander a traitor, he would become a fugitive. Uh, again, cannot marry, you know, so on and so forth. King Philip the founder, so offer forgiveness for the mistake. We get a negative 24 gold because King Philip the founder's discipline would go down by one. But Alexander would become influenced by us. All right, that's what we're going to have to do, I think. Uh, for a long time, the Sipsalid family have expected to marry one of their scions to uh, Prince Alexander. But more recently, the Gauls have offered to formalize our peaceful dealings if one of their women can marry Alexander instead. While our agreement with the Sipsalids was informal, breaking it would still have some repercussions. On the other hand, making peace with the Gauls could have many benefits. He shall marry Potita the Gaul. Well, she's an orator. Okay, she can be a governor or ambassador. As a governor, she can hurry projects with orders. She's witty. Uh, we like that. I also like her face tattoo. Uh, her wisdom, one. Charisma, five. Wow. The Gaul's opinion of us would go way up. Uh, minus one legitimacy because we married into a tribe. Uh, but with the Gauls, we would have peace. But all other families would go negative 40 against us. My gosh. Um, we'll see, we're already paying the Gauls off, so, you know, whatever, I, you know, screw it. Uh, this lady with the 80s hairdo is, uh, Metradora, the builder, she's a builder. That would make the Sipsalids happy with us, they would also give us some iron. I think we have to do that. Now, you know, the Gauls, if we weren't already paying them off, maybe I would have thought about that, but we're already paying them off. It doesn't really matter how mad they get at us. Uh, well, it does, but they're already, you know, we're in bad relations. So uh, Prince Alexander has returned from his philosophy studies, but he would like to retain a tutor for additional training. What should that be? Well, we could try to give him some charisma or we could try to give him some wisdom. I'm going to stay down that wisdom track, I think. Civics, charisma is civics, wisdom is science. Uh, the only reason I'm hesitating is I hate when any of these are negative, right? I mean, as, if they're neutral and they're not giving you any penalties, that's okay. But once they turn negative, they really hurt. Well, I'm going to give them wisdom. I'm going to give them wisdom. Okay, uh, we're still one year away from the settler being created in Pella to come over and get on the city site. We have got... The warriors that are sitting here, they are now level three, and they're combat one and combat two. They need 300 training to go to another level, level four, so we're not there yet. Now, we could add the general this time so that Philip's with them. I don't think that's necessary until, um, let's just sentry them. I don't think that's necessary really, until somebody's making a move on us. Now, we want to get away from the Gauls a little bit. We pick up 10 gold just by finding that lavender. Uh, let's go here. Okay. Uh, let's go here and harvest the horses. That gives us another 30 gold. So we're picking up. But we're now negative per turn for food, iron, and stone. Now, none of those are critical yet. We're not buying them. We don't have you know massive shortages or something. Uh, but just something to keep in mind. Okay, uh, let's, we haven't really explored over here at all. I'd kind of like to know what's over there, but, uh, you know, may as well look. Okay, we got some barbarians there. We may have to spend some training and march him out of here. Uh, and you may say, why is that? Well, the reason is, is they can attack him, um, uh, and kill him. Okay, so let's see, that's three, that's one, 
That's three. That's one. I want to get him away from them and also get him in the woods. So I'm going to go ahead and actually use that hunter training and get him into these woods. Or do we just go further even? Let's go around over here. Uh, I'd hate to I'd hate to use the extra order. I mean, I could just back him up here and put him in these woods because they can't see a scout if he's in the woods. Uh, what is this? River range trees. There are trees there. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go right there. Yes, I know. I know. Uh. Oh, he can only go to here. Hey, how about to there? Yes, I'm going to force. Oh, I've got to pick it. Oh, I see. I got to pick it over here. And now he can go back here into the trees. I just don't want our scout to get killed. Uh, so we spent 100 training. I hate to do it, but I think it was a smart move. All right, we're going to end that year. Prince Alexander and Princess Consort Metrodora have given birth to a son, Duke Pyrrhus. Wow, that was quick. Uh, that must have been a wedding night uh, surprise. Um, okay, well, we've got a new son, Duke Pyrrhus. Now, Duke Pyrrhus is here. He's considered part of the Sipsalid family because she's Sipsalid, uh, which is kind of interesting to me, right? I mean, Alexander, are, we're not part of any family, the royal court. Uh, Duke Pyrrhus, though, is considered Sipsalid. Okay, oh, over at Pella, we have formed the settlers here, and they're going to head off. We're going to use as many orders as we can without paying the force march to get them over here. So that's the first order of business this time. Let's get them on the move. Now then, let's look at our warriors. Uh, to go up to the next level, they need 290. We're at 205. Again, we could add Alexander here. Maybe that's what I'll do. So if we look here, look how good Alexander is as a general, mainly on the attack. He's also good at uh, deal double damage, potentially. Um, but I think I want to make him a general. That also makes a, him happier with us. Um, and our guys will heal in neutral territory automatically. So I'm going to put Alexander in there. It uses up an order, but... We may as well give him something to do. Keep him. It gave us another plus 20 for our relations with him. So I like that. So what are we going to do next with Pella? Well, we could build a fisherman. We could build another worker. But I think we're fine with the two that we have. We could do a farmer. All right. And so if we go out here, it'll tell us, you know, if we wanted to do this, it would give us plus 5.5 food down to the right there. Uh, if we did the farmer specialist, if we do the fisher specialist, look at that, plus two culture, plus 20 gold a year. It adds the luxury dies. I think that's the very obvious choice. Although we're going to have to start thinking about getting uh, stone and iron here fairly soon. But let's do a fisherman there. Uh, I think that's the obvious next thing to do because you may say, man, you need another warrior or two. Well, that is probably true, but when we found the Argiad family uh, seat down here for our second city, that will give us a free warrior. Okay, something to keep in mind there. So let's close. We've got five orders left. Let's go to our worker over here. So this worker's done. She's like, I'm, you know, I don't, I've got nothing left to do, guys. Uh, not seeing anything obvious, um, for her to build. Hmm. We got these two farms going. She could head down this way. Uh, what else do I need orders for? Well, these guys have already moved, right? They can't go any further. We could spend a hundred training and go ahead and get that founded, but I'm not going to. Oh, as a matter of fact, we couldn't. It would take three orders to get here and a hundred. I don't want to do that much force march. Um, can we go there with just one order force march? Hold on. Let's try this again. Zoom out. I mean, we could. Is it worth 100 training? Probably not. Okay, let's go back up to this worker. 
Um, we can just click there. And I do think I'm going to have that worker come all the way down here and immediately try to help. But first of all, we're going to harvest some honey. Okay, so we've harvested that honey, you know, kind of makes it worthwhile coming across here. It almost feels like a wasted turn, right? Oh, what else? Uh, scavengers, what is this? Wishing to do their part in support of Pella, eager citizens have offered to journey out into the wilderness and scavenge for food. Uh, okay, plus 130 food, you are not needed now. Uh, that takes down the discontent. Let's get off of this for a second. We'll come back to it. I'll show you why. Let's go to Pella. It's at 60 to 60, 100. So if we reduce that discontent, we wouldn't have to do a festival or something like that to get rid of it. Uh, that's interesting. Do we really need that food? We're getting plus 34 a turn. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting one. I haven't been confronted with this before. 130 food or negative 40 discontent. It's a very interesting decision. Uh, well, gosh darn it. I feel like this is the shorter term. This is the longer term. I'm going to do the longer term. Uh, not sure if that was the perfect uh, choice there, but there may not have been a perfect choice. All right, let's keep our scout going out here. Uh, we don't want him to venture. Let's see, he can go there with zero. Oh, what is this landmark? The Sinjar Plain. Okay, so this is the Sinjar Plain. Is this the edge of the map? Uh, okay, well, that's it. We have no orders left. As you can see up here, Egypt is ahead of us. They have done four things. They have four from four weak cities. We have two from one developing city. So when we form this other city, uh, we will get some points. Let's end the year. And I'm going to start this year and see what we can do here. Um, first of all, we definitely want to get the settlers into this city site so let's go settlers let's go here and i already said i want to do the argiads and get our military really going so let's do the argiad family and we are now known as philip the settler okay this is called amphipolis all right and what is what do we want to build here well probably a warrior although we are going to get a free warrior so let's hold off on that making that decision but now we've got the argiads here we'll get a free warrior did we already? Yeah, we did, actually. Okay, so this warrior group is the new one. You can see underneath here how much uh, experience they have. This warrior group, we are going to go ahead and promote them. We've got enough to do so. We could do focus one, bloodthirsty. I kind of want to do promote to fierce. Yeah, plus 10 attack and defend. I like that against infantry. Okay, so we promoted them. And then next time we'll get them maybe back over to the capital city. Or maybe what we'll do is take these guys with Alexander back over to the capital city. That probably makes sense. But let's see what else we have to do. Choose production. We already talked about that. Uh, there. And then we have this worker here. What can she do? Well, she can't do anything yet, uh, but eventually she's going to be able to, you know, build nets there and start to build out this town. For now, oh, I see. We could build a mine there. We could build a farm on top of this lavender. Do we want to get rid of the lavender? I don't know. Uh, the farm, I think it's going to give us a bonus, right? Lush and arid, negative four. Okay, plus five from farm, plus 40% lush, and it's near fresh water, plus 20%. Perfect. Let's have her build a farm right there. Um, all right, next unit. The scout is over here. We've discovered the Sinjar Plain. All right, if we back up a little bit, how many orders do we have left? Three. Okay, he just keeps opening up stuff, but he also gets us, you know, nice bonuses when he d 
discovers things like a plus five there, uh, harvest the horses, we get money, even though it cost us an order, we now have no orders left. And then we'll have to come here and decide what we want to produce in our new town. Do we build a third warrior unit? Now this would be steadfast. Do we build a worker? Do we build a settler? That's 13 years. Well, I'm not sure if we want to go quite that far. Uh, we've got a fisherman in Pella in three, and then I think it only takes about seven years to do a settler there. So it probably doesn't make sense. Five years to do a warrior. I think you got to do that here in our warrior city. Um, we could also uh, do a governor eventually, uh, but we're uh, it can't be anybody that's not an Argiad, and it's got to have a certain personality type, and it doesn't look like any of the Argiads have that archetype, uh, but we'll look at all of that next time. We're on our way. We're in what? Let's see. Uh, we are in year eight of a potential 200. Uh, We've got a score of three. The Egyptians have a four. You need 55 to win as of right now. You see why we have three. We have one weak city and one developing city. That's based on culture. Uh, so anyway, we'll get back after it next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed this. I know I certainly did. Um, and I love this game. I think it's fantastic. So anyway, we'll keep playing this one and trying to win. Uh, Till next time, Strategy Gaming Dojo. Have a good one. Did that thing, did it blow up?